So, the, in this lecture, I will start the next topic that is the settlement of the foundation because I have discussed about the soil exploration, then the bearing capacity of the foundation, then uh, we will go for the settlement of the foundation because as you know that the two design criteria for the um, foundation uh, design is the bearing capacity and the settlement. So, I have discussed the different uh, bearing capacity theories and the different cases like uh, inclined load, eccentric loading case, then the layered soil case, the, the effect of soil compressibility, then the tilting base case, then the sloping ground case. So, all the cases are discussed in the bearing capacity um, uh, part and I have also discussed that oh, which theory you should uh, use for what condition ok. Because uh, and then uh, I solve the uh, number of example problems to show you how you can incorporate those theory and how you can use those theories to calculate the bearing capacity under different loading condition, different soil condition, different foundation conditions ok. So, uh, now today I will start the second part that is the settlement of the foundation, how you can calculate the settlement of a foundation, but before I, I, I start that part. So, I will just uh, discuss one small part that is remaining that is the fourth case for the layered soil uh, bearing capacity. So, first I will discuss that fourth case and then I will go for the for settlement part. So, now if I go for the case 4, so in the case 4 of that layer soil where the loose sand on stiff clay. Okay. So, loose sand on the stiff clay that means here your top layer is the weaker layer and the bottom layer is the stronger layer. Because previous three cases always the bottom layer uh, is the strong uh, weaker layer and the top layer is the stronger layer, but it is the uh, opposite case. So, in such case I will give the expression for three different footing condition that means the steep footing, your uh, rectangular footing and then the circular footing and if you have the equation for the rectangular footing you can uh, you can get the equation for the um, square footing also. Okay, so, now the first one is the steep footing So, in this case q u is given as half gamma 1 b in gamma dash. Now, what is this case particular? This is the foundation ok. This is the ground surface and this is my stiff clay and this is loose sand. So, this is here c equal to 0, here phi equal to 0. So, now in previous case where the this is the this was simply the opposite that means the, the um, stronger layer is on the top and the weaker layer is the bottom. So, there is a punching type of failure was considered, but here the stiff layer is the bottom. So, this stiff layer is considered as a rigid layer. Okay? and then then in then this case the failure will be most of the cases on the top layer ok. So, that is why it is calculated that this is the bearing capacity of the top layer half gamma 1 b gamma uh, in gamma dash plus because this is the third term basically. So, I should write the second term first then the third term. So, the second term this is gamma 1 d f into n q dash. So, this is d f ok, this is the first layer then plus the second uh, third third term gamma 1 b in gamma dash ok. So, this is the first term is 0 because c is equal to 0 then second term and the third term are given. 
Okay, so this is the Q u and that should be less than equal to Q b because uh, definitely that cannot be uh, more than the uh, bearing capacity of the bottom layer because in previous three cases this should not be uh, greater than Q t because in that case the stronger layer was the top layer. So, it should not be greater than Q t, but now this case the uh, stronger layer is the bottom layer. So, it should not be uh, greater than Q b. Okay? So, now what is Q b? Now, Q b will be equal to now if this is the case then this is C n C 2 a C 2 n C 2 plus gamma 1 d f. So, Q b is considered as gamma 1 d f because uh, as I mentioned here where the h part is not considered. Okay. So, now if you consider the gamma 1 d a plus h then you have to subtract uh, that h in from the main equation. So, that uh, is not given. So, that is given in q b term. So, h term is not considered. Uh, so, that is why it is uh, gamma 1 d f into c 2. So, because that h term is already within that uh, bearing capacity equation, it is incorporated. So, this is the equation for the strip footing. Now, for the circular footing, the equation will be q u is equal to gamma 1 d f n q dash then this shape factor is introduced s q dash then it is same half gamma 1 b n gamma dash then s gamma dash b or d then s gamma dash. So, this n gamma dash I s q dash and s gamma dash these are the shape factor and that should be less than q b and then the q b uh, should be equal to that 1.2 c c 2 n c plus gamma 1 d f. Okay, same as the um, strip footing only the for the square footing 1.2 term is introduced this is n c 2. Now, I can uh, uh, write the equation for rectangular footing. Okay, so, this is q u u, this is half or oh, uh, let me explain the uh, write the second part first, then I will write the first part. The same as uh, gamma 1 into d f, then n q dash. Now, the safe factor again we have to apply and that is 1 minus 1 minus s q dash into b divided by l. Then the third term that is half gamma 1 b n gamma dash then 1 minus 1 minus s gamma dash into b by l that should be less than q b and the q b is equal to 1 plus 0.2 b by l then c 2 n c 2 plus gamma 1 d f. So, this way I can calculate the bearing capacity for the fourth case okay, where the steep footing, circular footing and rectangular footing. Now, uh, the how I can calculate the n n q dash, n gamma dash and s q dash, s gamma dash. So, from this chart. So, this two chart will give you the bearing capacity factor as well as the safe factor. For example, since this dotted line is given n q dash and the firm line is given n gamma dash. Okay? So, these are the value h by b that means the thickness of the footing. So, this h by b 
So, this is H, this is the B width of the foundation. Okay. So, this is width of the foundation, this is the H. So, this H by B, if I know the H by B, then this is the internal uh, uh, friction angle of the obviously of the top layer. Then uh, this value H by B is 0.2, this form line is given for n gamma dash and this dotted line is given for n q dash, these are the value. So, this is for different uh, friction angle, this is this 2 for 0.42, this is 0 0.4, then 0 0.6, then uh, this line is uh, 1 and this dotted line is also for 1, then th this firm line is up to 1.5 and dotted line is 3. So, that means, H by B for firm line is uh, up to 1 point, uh, firm line is given 1.5 and dotted line is given up to 3. So, these are the values. So, from here you will get the modified bearing capacity factor. So, these are called modified bearing capacity factor. So, from this chart you will get the n gamma dash and n q dash and similarly you will get the s q dash and s gamma dash by using this chart. Again, this is h by b and the form line is given for s gamma dash and the dotted line is given s q dash. This is for 0 0.21, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 1 and 2. So, this way and for different uh, friction angle value. So, this way you will get the modified bearing capacity factor and modified shape factor uh, to incorporate the fourth case that is if the top layer is loose sand and the bottom layer is stiff clay, then how you can calculate the bearing capacity. So, this uh, chart you can use and you will put this chart in the equation which is given and then you will get the maximum bearing capacity or the bearing capacity of the two layer case and you will see that these are the equations. Okay. So, now one thing uh, before I finish this uh, part, one thing I want to mention that in my previous class, uh, class also when I solve the bearing capacity uh, this two layer case equation. Okay, for uh, here I am uh, taking some loose uh, sand and the st uh, soft clay. So, all this term. So, basically if the soil is loose or medium loose, if it is the soft or medium uh, consistency um, clay, then uh, always uh, this uh, shear failure will not, uh, general shear failure will not occur. So, there is a possibility that there may be a punch, um, local shear failure. But the equation that I use during the bearing capacity calculation, I use all the cases uh, even if when I put the foundation directly on the on the on the on the loose sand or the uh, weaker soil, I, put, I consider the uh, all the terms or the bearing capacity factor those are proposed for general shear failure. Yeah? So, that means I have used the all the bearing capacity factor proposed for the general shear failure even though uh, the soil is uh, weak soil and I put the foundation directly over there. But actually when this um, theory was developed, there is no such recommendation is given that uh, it is taken the, that what to do if the soil there is a local shear failure. Now, one thing I have mentioned that I have given the compressibility effect uh, part. Now, if those data are available, then you can you can check whether you need any compressibility um, corrections or not for your case, your soil case. Now, if you need that, then you put those corrections here. If you have those data, you put those corrections here and then uh, you um, incorporate the soil compressibility effect also because that is important because here we are taking not all the soils are not the uh, stronger soil, some weaker soil also. That means, when, but these recommendations are not given here in original theory. So, that means you have to collect those data and you, you have to check whether some compressibility, uh, soil compressibility effect is there or you have to put those corrections. That is one way. Another way, in some researcher they have suggested that uh, when the soil is weak soil, so instead of taking full C, you take two third of C value, which is recommended by the Tazaki for the for the local shear failure, the two third of uh, C and uh, tan inverse uh, two third of uh, tan phi. Okay, so you do that part also. Because if you if you are sure that this soil is very poor, poor soil, weaker soil, that means there there is be, there will be a local shear failure um, possibility. Or this is basically just to reduce the bearing capacity. 
if I take full C, then I will get a higher bearing capacity obviously, but the soil is uh, we, uh, weaker soil and the bearing capacity equation or the factors that I am using, it is valid for the stronger soil or the shear, general shear failure. So, to be on the safe side, just to um, uh, it is reduce the um, shear strength parameter, that means by the recommendation given by the uh, Tazaki. But actual original theory as this type of recommendation is not given. So, I have taken full uh, C value, full strength parameters I have given, even, even in the um, uh, assignment problems also I will mention that, that you take full uh, strength parameter value. In the exam also you will take full strength parameter value, but you should know that to be in the safe side, it is better during your design that you reduce this uh, strain parameter value by as per the either given by the Tazaki's recommendation when two third of C or the uh, phi value also you reduce according to that because when you are putting uh, foundation on the weaker soil directly specifically because we have to calculate Q T basically you have to calculate Q B and Q B um, soil is weaker soil. So, during basically Q B calculation you reduce your because QT calculation reduction is not required because QT is your stronger soil. So, general shear failure will occur when I am talking about this is not the layer case, I am talking about when you are calculating, calculating the bearing capacity individually for top layer and the bottom layer. So, for the top layer it is ok, for the bottom layer bearing capacity calculation you reduce the shear strength parameters ok or if you have the compressibility. Uh, soil compressibility uh, factors available or those data are available, you can apply those factors also depending upon what parameters are available. But for your these examples also I am taking full strength parameter in the exam and the assignments also you will take the full strength parameter, but when you apply them in the uh, real design, uh, I would suggest that you can reduce it. Uh, but again uh, it is engineer's choice, engineer's judgment whether he or she will take the full parameter, strength parameter or reduced strength parameter. But these are the uh, fact that I have discussed. Okay, so, now I uh, will go to the next part that is the next topic the, the settlement of uh, foundation. Okay. So, now uh, as you know there are two Mm, uh, design criteria. One is the bearing capacity, uh, another is the settlement of the foundation. So, when we are talking about settlement of the foundation, so the initial part uh, definitely is, is all these parts are covered in the foundation engineering course. So, that is why I am not I will not uh, uh, go in detail in this uh, in this uh, part, those are already been covered in the foundation engineering course. But for the continuation purpose, I will explain them uh, so that uh, there should be a continuation. I, I did it for the shallow foundation bearing capacity also. I, I explain uh, initially few uh, case things, those are uh, very common for foundation in course. So, the now the those things are uh, similar type of things I will explain in settlement part also. Okay. So, that means, we have the three major type of settlements that we have to check that the uniform settlement, differential settlement and tilt. What is the difference? In uniform settlement, your whole building will settle uniformly and in differential settlement, suppose some column will deform more compared to the other columns okay, or few columns will deform more compared to the other columns. So, that is called the differential settlement. And in the tilt, suppose one side of your building will tilt or will deform more compared to the other side of the building. So, that total building will tilt in towards a particular site where the deformation is more. So, that is called tilting, differential settlement and the uniform settlement. So, most of the design uh, we um, if suppose your um, soil parameters are not uh, significantly uh, varying in, in your site or your design uh, or, or the load of the um, foundation uh, or design or the load coming on each foundation as a significantly uh, uh, different or then there is a huge the variation uh, in the load coming on the foundation. Then also you have to go for the differential settlement check and tilting check also. Okay. Otherwise, 
if the loading are more or less same coming on the all the foundation soil properties are more or less same then generally you only go for the uniform settlement but if the design load is different or the in different column and that difference is significantly very high then you have to go for other two checks also and the soil parameter variation is also significant so in the settlement uh, basically three types one is the immediate settlement consolidation settlement and the secondary settlement okay secondary uh, basically this is primary consolidation secondary settlement and the secondary compression settlement so the immediate settlement basically it's elastic settlement it takes place during the application of loading so um, and this immediate settlement is very um, in the significant in case of uh, clay so, uh, sandy soil in sandy soil most of the settlements are immediate settlements so that means you will get the settlement within a seven days uh, even less than that because in uh, consolidation settlement which is uh, a primary settlement for major settlement for the clay soil because uh, in case of clay soil your permeability is less so when you apply the load soil uh, it, uh, soil dissipation takes more time so that's why the consolidation is a very major settlement for the clay soil and secondary settlement is occurs due to volume change uh, or due to the rearrangement of the particles so that is is secondary compression settlement so this is the um, um, different cases where i will get the immediate settlement or primary consolidation settlement or secondary compression settlement for example the sand as i mentioned granular type of soil immediate settlement is the majority of the settlement for inorganic clay primary consolidation is the major part of the settlement and organic clay secondary compression is the major part of the settlement so in this case in this course uh, basically we will concentrate uh, or i will concentrate on the immediate settlement and the primary consolidation settlement so we assume that our soil uh, is not uh, where the or, uh, secondary compression settlement will not uh, uh, be a major part or uh, so that's why we will consider un only the immediate settlement and the primary settlement the primary consolidation settlement so now this is the typical um, chart or the um, slide where I have given all the methods, um, almost all the uh, important methods, those are used to determine the settlement of clay soil as well as the granular soil. And I will discuss these all these um, methods. Okay. So that means the first the immediate settlement for clay that I can calculate by using this equation. So I will discuss what is the different terms of this equation and then I can calculate the consolidation settlement. So, this is the first term will give you the immediate settlement then the consolidation settlement and either I can use the this top equation or I can use the bottom equation for the consolidation settlement. So, this is the primary consolidation settlement. So, if I add this immediate settlement and the consolidation settlement then I will get the total settlement of a foundation resting on a clay. And for the granular soil as I mentioned the immediate settlement is the major uh, um, part of the settlement. So, most of the settlement will take place immediately. So, these methods, uh, these settlements can be mostly calculated by field test data. So, I, I, I can get this settlement from directly from the plate load test method, I can get it from the SPT base uh, method, then I, I can get it by the SCPT base method, that means the static cone penetration base method. So, if I have the data of plate load test, I, I can uh, calculate the settlement of a foundation. If I have the data of the SPT value or SPTN, then I will also get the um, settlement of the foundation. If I have data for the uh, static cone penetration, basically the cone resistance, that is QC, QC, then also I will get the settlement of the granular soil. Uh, I, uh, we can apply the um, semi empirical methods also, that is the fourth one and then uh, we can use the in strain influence factor methods uh, that also will be discussed. So, these are the uh, these uh, basically five methods the uh, lower five methods can be applicable to determine the settlement of granular soil 
but for the immediate settlement for clay we can use the first equation and the consolidation settlement we can use the second equation and you can see the um, consolidation settlement and the method based on scpt and the semi empirical methods so these three are more or less same okay so that's why i will give a example problem to calculate the consolidation settlement only so the similar way you can calculate the if you have the cpt data scpt data then you can calculate the settlement of the granular soil or you can use the empirical equation also by using these uh, methods to calculate the uh, settlement of a sand so now uh, one by one i will discuss this uh, this total seven methods i have talk, uh, I, have this, uh, I have mentioned here two are for clay soil and five are for for uh, sandy soil so now this seven methods i will discuss now so for the immediate or the elastic settlement so this um, uh, immediate settlement this equation is is um, based on the elastic theory and this this is the elastic settlement so where is i is the immediate settlement and q is the net foundation pressure net foundation pressure acting on the foundation base b is the width of the foundation e is the elastic modulus of the soil mu is the poisson ratio of the soil and if is the influence factor and once i'll get these things then because this theory is valid for the surface footing but if your foundation is placed at a depth then you have to apply the depth correction okay so that that means what are the types of corrections are required two types of correction required required then the depth correction or the rigidity correction no rigidity corrections why it is required that means if you have the influence factor table you can see this influence factor table this if value i can get from this table where it is given for flexible foundation and rigid foundation now if uh, an inflexible foundation uh, different types of foundation like circular square rectangular which different different l by v uh, value 1.5 2 5 10 and 100 then it is for center corner at this average okay so that means uh, and obviously the center one here has the more influence factor so center one will always uh, will calculate the uh, settlement at the center so center one is giving more value so center then the corner and the average so now if you take the flexible foundation if value to calculate the immediate settlement for rigid foundation then you have to apply the rigidity correction and if you take the rigid foundation if value to calculate the settlement for immediate settlement for the clay then this rigidity corrections is not required because we have taken the if for rigid foundation itself but in our most of our design or basically i prefer to take the flexible foundation center if value then you apply a rigidity correction okay now what is that rigidity correction value now if you look at these uh, values that means for rigid footing and the center so this is center it is i f value is 1 and the rigid at the at the rigid foundation it is 0.86 because why rigid foundation it is not center average corner because it, uh, if it is a rigid foundation it is expected that the foundation will settle uniformly that's why only one factor is given but in flexible foundation it is not like that because in the center and the edge there will be different uh, settlement okay so that's why different values are given so now uh, for the square footing it is 1.12 and it is 0.82 so if you see that the rigid footing influence factor is almost 80% of the influence factor of the flexible footing at center you can see is roughly 80% so that's why as i mentioned that uh, what i i do that i take always in the calculation whether the foundation is the flexible foundation or this is a rigid foundation generally the rough foundation you consider as a rigid foundation or isolated footing that means the 
one foundation for one column is considered as a flexible foundation. So, if uh, now I preferably, uh, I generally prefer to take the IF value of flexible foundation, IF value uh, at center for flexible foundation for all the cases. Now, if that it is a rigid footing, then I apply a rigidity correction which is 0.8. So, the rigidity correction factor is how much? The rigidity correction factor is this correction factor is 0.8. Okay, so, the rigidity correction factor is 0.8 is applied when you calculate this uh, uh, SI by using the given value by taking the influence factor at the center for flexible footing. Now, if it is flexible footing then the rigidity correction is not required. Now, if it is a rigid foundation then you apply 0.8 with this calculated immediate settlement. Okay, so, now, uh, these are the table by which you can, because you know, we, we, we should know the n and mu value for the soil. So, these are the tables are given for different uh, soil. So, from this table uh, or, or you have the e and mu value directly, uh, you can use them, but if you have, if you do not have those values, so this table will help you to take the appropriate e and mu value. So, for this table is for the mu value and this table is for the E value or Young's modulus. This is the E value table. So, this uh, if you have the N value SPT, then also you can calculate the E by using these correlations. If you have the QC value and cone resistance, then also you can use this correlation to determine the E value. And you can you can uh, correlate with E with the shear strength, under shear strength or this is uh, Cu or uh, Su or Cu, unread cohesion also. If you if you know the unread cohesion of the soil, then by using these correlations also, you will get the uh, E value. So, but these are the correlations and you can see these some ranges are given. So, it is always better to have your, uh, um, have the particular uh, E and mu value for that uh, soil for which you are um, designing the foundation. So, that means, you should have the E value and mu value for that particular soil for which you are um, designing the foundation. So, that is these tables will give you a guidelines, but it is better always have the actual E and mu value. Okay, so, now these are the some, uh, uh, this is another table by which also you can get the elastic modulus for different types of soil. And then, uh, as I mentioned, that there is a depth correction uh, factor. Okay, so this is the rigidity correction factor I have discussed. Now there is a depth correction factor. So depth correction factor I can get from this uh, depth correction factor Fox uh, depth correction factor chart. So this this x axis uh, is depth correction factor, y axis this d by root over l by b, and this is root over l by b divided by d. This is the depth of foundation. So Generally, the upper part of this chart is used for the shallow foundation design and the lower part of this chart is used for the deep foundation here. So, now for the shallow foundation design, most of the problems we will use the upper part, but when you uh, calculate the settlement for the pile foundation, then we will use the lower part. And this is L by B is the L is the length of the foundation, B is the width of the foundation. So, these are the chart from which I will get the bearing capacity. Uh, or the depth correction factor for this immediate settlement. Okay, so, that means, I have discussed the depth correction factor, I have discussed how you can get a um, value of E and the mu. So, again I am mentioning that you, if you have the actual E and mu value that is always preferable, but if you do not have, so these tables will guide you to select the appropriate E and mu value. Okay, so, this way I can calculate the immediate settlement. So, this settlement uh, will be give you the immediate settlement for the clay soil. So, next class I will discuss the consolidation settlement of the clay soil and then the other settlements that uh, settlement procedure uh, to determine the settlement of the granular soil or the sandy soil. Thank you.